we've ever seen with five world champions included. So my co-commentator for this one is Stephen Hallworth and Stephen. There's always an added degree of anticipation when Ronnie O'Sullivan is playing. Yeah, good frame. morning, folks. Really, really looking forward to this one. You know, it always is exciting when Ronnie O'Sullivan's name is in the draw or in the group in this circumstance. And here he is. Great to see him taking part in the event. Any event is always better when Ronnie O'Sullivan is in it. But make no mistake, this format can be very, very cutthroat. We've seen some shock results over the years. OK, you look at the winners group so far and all the names in it, as we've already mentioned. But there are no guarantees. He's going to have to play well today, that's for sure. Craig entitled to still be smarting about last night. He got to the semi-finals of Group 6. He should have beaten Karen Wilson. He ended up losing the decider on the pink. Yeah, I just spoke to Sam actually in the practice room. And to be wow. fair to him, fair play, he had a little bit of a giggle with me about that deciding frame last night. It was poor, wasn't it? They was missing everything. They was both gone. Sam said he was absolutely gone at one point and Kyron didn't look too far behind him either it was a it was a real scramble to get over the line but hopefully Sam today has, has just managed to have a good night's sleep sort his head out get back and as we've already said he's got another chance here to get his place in winners group two excellent points from O'Sullivan so far though Yes, it would take 20 minutes to talk about the decider between Craigie and Wilson. But basically, it boiled down to this. Craigie had a wonderful chance to clear up. He potted the green, but came short on the brown. He did knock in a thin brown to a, a blind pocket, but ran out of position on the blue. And shortly afterwards, Wilson had the chance to, to steal it. Well... 13. What a start there from O'Sullivan. He looks quite focused, actually. Yeah, he does, actually. You're right. And I just saw him on the practice table. He looked like he was hitting the ball beautifully. It, he hits the ball so well. We know that. But this has been a really good start straight away in amongst the big business end. With the red slowly becoming nicely spread. 20. When I did my intro for the show, and I described him as the goat, well, five, ten years ago, I might have really thought about that as to whether it was appropriate. There's no thinking now. It's just a fact he is. That one didn't work out too well. Yeah, you can see the white ball just of delay screw into the reds there. Could have done with a little bit more zip on the white, try and get through the pack. Nearly landed on one to the middle, which would have been quite fortunate, but that's going to be end of break. And even that, the patience to play the correct shot is a good sign. <laughs> Valiant efforts shot to nothing of course and the main thing is where well, the cue ball came to rest A 
has only played on one previous occasion in the Championship League in 2020. F. Sullivan, 1-3-1. One, one. But Craigie showed him he can play with a 97 break in the frame. He did win. Yeah, he's a good player, is Sam. We all know that. He won't be intimidated one bit by Ronnie. Quite a shrewd character, and he'll stand up to it. Tap on the table, and rightly so, because Ronnie's played a pretty good one there. Welded that cue ball to the cushion. There's no easy return back to his flat cushion from there. The reds are everywhere. Possible half chance for Sam this. This red's quite thin, but it will go. What's the damage? He's left one for Ronnie. Another really well cued shot. The man who's never won the Championship League, but he came very close in 2016 down at Crondon Park Golf Club in his native Essex. Got to the overall winners group final, edged out 3-2 by Judd Trump. He refereed some very lengthy matches yesterday, Paul Collier. I think he's in for a very different experience today. <laughs> Yeah, especially when this man's at the table. They don't call him the rocket for nothing. And already he's looking in pretty good stroke this morning. Just see how he's moving the cue ball around. He's got a nice touch already. And these tables are playing pretty quick as well. And he's always done well on the Rassons. That's why he's been a multiple winner of the Champion of Champions. He enjoys them. Yeah, I think with any table, if you're hitting the ball nicely and timing it well, you know, you can adapt pretty quickly and get through the white properly. If you're struggling just a fraction, it can make you look silly. 
don't think we're going to be seeing any of that from Ronnie today. 36. Seven. Just gets down and pots that red so easily with the other hand, the left hand. What an asset. Yeah, think back to that left-handed red he potted on that maximum. Was it in the Welsh Open many, many years ago? That's probably one of the greatest shots ever for me. In the next frame, I'll tell you about how the left-handed stuff started. match-wise, and it was quite an interesting story, actually. 47. Sullivan 52 on the frame. Uh, Sullivan's break ends at 52, but that's more than sufficient for the man who's won so much to win the opening frame. Welcome back to Leicester. Welcome back to the Mattioli Arena and welcome back to Ronnie O'Sullivan's first match in this year's Bed Victor Championship League. It's begun well. Sam Craigie frozen out. As O'Sullivan made a 52 break, needed two bites of the cherry to secure frame one. I can also tell you there's a frame over on table two. Jack Jones winning the opener at Pang Junzu's expense. Now then, Craigie has to take advantage of opportunities like this. One. Six. Fourteen. Too. Just a couple of open reds available for Sam. He's going to have to start just planning his route on how to attack that pack at some stage. Pink being off its spot is not ideal for Sam at the moment to go into the pack off the blue. So that's why he's chosen to get it out of the way now. So in potting this red, it opens another red to the left corner. 
which he could potentially leave going. himself low on to open a few more reds. And there, Craigie playing left-handed. Before O'Sullivan's ambidextrous approach, it wasn't too common. Now most players can switch. Yeah, and in my opinion, Sam's actually one of the better players with his left hand. Obviously, Ron is the best with his left, of course, but Sam's very, very good with his left hand. I've seen him play a number of shots in the past where he gets a lot of work with that cue ball left-handed, which is very difficult. There we see Sam finishing low on that red, screwing into the reds and back out. Pushed a few more open, three or four, maybe five reds now. Slowly building that lead. This is a good chance for Sam. Just a reminder, we mentioned this yesterday. He's on the the verge of a landmark. His next century will be his 100th in professional competition. Be a good memory to make it against O'Sullivan. Yeah, wouldn't it? That's a great milestone to, to make. And every chance of doing that today. Oh, but that one's just gone astray. We just over hit the pink Seven. previous. Could have done with being a little bit closer to that red it was a bit of a stretch and it made the difference One. nicely struck by Ronnie so potting this black there's a red to the left corner which will open up another to the right can look to chip away a few more reds now he's at the table I'll tell you that quick story about when he started playing left handed it was down at the Diamond Centre in Earthlingborough May 1997 he was up against Peter Ebden in the semi-finals wasn't happy with the way he was playing after the first frame which he played in orthodox fashion he basically went left handed 16. and won 6-2 Ebden took umbrage because of course back then he didn't know no one knew just how good O'Sullivan was left-handed and the following day he won that Premier League did O'Sullivan beating Stephen Hendry in the final 10-8 helped by a couple of centuries Yeah, I went to interview Peter Ebden after the match and he wasn't best pleased. But of course he didn't have the, the information that we now know that O'Sullivan plays left-handed for fun. Yeah, I bet at the time he thought, wow, this kid's got some front. 32. But fair play to him. What a player. And look at how he's just 32. opened those reds up so effortlessly. Purposely leaving himself little angles each time just to try and flick a few more into play one final footnote on that left-handed thing of course he took it a, a step further against Alan Robidoux in the world championship didn't he Ronnie when he played a couple of shots one-handed <laughs> I think he's so good he could play a few no-handed So the two reds next to the pink, they're going to need attending to. I'm not sure if they pot anywhere, so they may just need a little touch just to develop them. Well, he's finished just about perfect on the blue here to play a soft little cannon. Yeah, that's not bad. This red's quite thin. But again, left-handed, this should be no problem.
53. No problem to such an extent. He's actually held the cue ball a little too well. Yeah, there wasn't really a lot he could do with that shot there. So possibly just going to be laying up behind the black here. Send the cue ball somewhere towards the green. Well, he could have done without the cannon on the blue. He's not got the snooker. Yeah, the only good thing about the cannon, at least he's not the blue safe. And with a 16-point lead, that's to O'Sullivan's advantage. Completely unintentionally, as Stephen said. And that's what you call the telling safety. There's not really a lot that Sam can do here other than to just try and lay on to the red. Line was pretty good there. Just needs to make a slight adjustment with the pace. There may be a possible edge of that red sticking out for Sam, but it's of no value to him at all. That's why he's choosing to come off the cushion. If he can land on the red without it being touching. That'll be about as best a result as he could hope for. Well, he's just pushed it on. I wonder if Ronnie will be tempted by this. He's got a little bit of an angle as well, so he can actually get out for the black. Well, it stayed out. And now this is a chance for Sam, 20 points behind. How big will that blue be on that side rail? That's Ronnie's only insurance at the moment. I'm surprised he missed that, actually, what? because they have been accommodating balls along that top cushion, these pockets. Sam would love to be able to pop black, yellow, and then from the green, just flick the blue out, but... Not sure he can get the perfect angle with the brown being where it is. I think if he could get the cue ball bang on the brown spot and play the green, it would be a natural to get the blue out. Doesn't look so easy from where the balls are at the moment. We'll soon find out. Craigie is 10 points behind. So he needs to clear down to the pink. Doesn't look to me like he can get that close to the blue. So well. Taking the points here and he's going to try and play safety. a good safety on the blue. One of those situations where O'Sullivan's three-point lead doesn't count for anything. He needs blue and pink. So does his opponent. Oh, where's the 
there's that blue going. Oh, goodness me. I was just about to say it's it's a blue ball frame, this, but he's fluked the blue in the middle. He's not on the pink, so it's now a pink ball frame. A double kiss fluke. <laughs> oh, no. Ronnie, ruthless, relentless, no guilt whatsoever. Quite rightly so, because this game, you can have good and bad luck, and when you get the good, you might as well take advantage of it. 2 0. The swings and arrows, or the slings and arrows, of outrageous fortune. The third frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan. For Ronnie O'Sullivan, fluking the blue, then adding a terrific pink to take a 2 0 lead over Sam Craigie. You know, in the first frame, of his quarter-final against Mark Selby in the Players' Championship last week. A similar thing happened, and O'Sullivan was on the receiving end. Selby fluked to red off the ball cushion to middle somehow at an acute angle. Oh, fine pot there. Yeah, Selby fluked to red. One. Laid a snooker. And from the resultant chance, he made a 60-plus break. And we all know what happened then. He went on to whitewash O'Sullivan 6 0. This, though, was a, a beauty. When you have that kind of double kiss, sometimes the, the cue ball goes in. And that was avoided, and then the pink was excellent. I must say, I like O'Sullivan's attitude so far. Treating this with respect, with a due diligence. It merits. Not the best from Craigie, who's trying to avoid being in the same hole as he was in Group 6 when he played his first two matches and won one frame total in them. Oh, that is just so smooth. The timing was immaculate. Yeah, you don't even need to see the shot to just hear that he struck it to perfection. Just that sound it makes when the cue ball leaves the tip of the cue. Struck it beautifully, trolled the cue ball, and now he's banging Sorry. amongst them. Into the pack here. Try and hold the cue ball in the middle of the table. Now is he on one? 16. Well, if the expression's anything to go by, he isn't. Yeah, it looks very tight, that, doesn't it? Reddy's looking at now, may just skim past the black. But again, it's very thin. One of them where you've just got to trust your line. Just about missed it. It was a tough Daniel pot, that. 16. It was very close to being nicely on the other red. Yes, he was unlucky, there's no doubt. But you can't complain too vehemently after the fluke he had at the end of the second frame. One of these scenarios where Ronnie's done all the hard work for Sam. He's got the reds open. Now Sam's got a chance after that miss red. He 
You feel he has to make this count now. As you've already mentioned, Phil, he was very unlucky Thanks. in that previous frame at the end. This is the chance he would have been hoping for. I can tell you it's 2 0 on both sides of the arena. Jack Jones has made a fine start against Pang Junzu on table two. Winning the second frame, he potted an absolutely terrific pink, powered it into the yellow pocket, and brought the cue ball all the way back up the table and added the black. 15. Twenty three. Now, this is horrible queuing because he's not just bridging over one ball, it's two. Again, being able to go to the left hand helps. But in this kind of situation, you need stability. Yeah, I tell you what, this is so tough with the opposite hand. We can all pop balls with our left hand, but that is very, very tough. Queuing over like that, he's surely got to get the spider out here. I know I wouldn't be confident trying to do that left-handed. Is the conventional spider enough? Seems that way. Maybe he'll need the branding iron. Going back to Southpaw. It was never the right shot, that, for me. It was so, so tough with your left hand. Very unstable. And I bet he, he wished it had just maybe put the rest on top of the spider there or something just to give a little bit more of an extension. That was so tough. One. O'Sullivan discovering what all of the players here this week have discovered. When you play with deep screw on these tables, boy, do they react. Who would have thought he would have made one from that? Yeah, you could hear him just mutter something as, as soon as that cue ball made contact with the red, it just flew back, didn't it? Made the difference as well. I bet Sam can't believe Ronnie's just made one from there has to make this chance count now there's no doubt about that Sullivan has had 
two chances in this frame. Didn't make much from either. 22. And against someone like Craigie, that means you're going to run into the buffers. So this is frame ball. Such a fine cumin, Sam Craigie. I think in terms of pure ability, one of the best players yet to win a tournament. Of course, 51. more goes into it than ability, but he's got so much potential. 53. Yeah, ever since he was a junior player, everyone's known it. Went missing for a few years, but oh, is he back? He's a great player, is Sam. As you as you say, he's got so much natural talent in there. You can just see, he just glides around the table, just gets down, 60. hits the ball very nicely. So fluent, sees the shots quickly. All the ingredients are there. 65. Well, against Ronnie O'Sullivan, Sam Craigie has made the highest break of the match so far. A break of 78 after O'Sullivan missed that thin black off its spot to a top corner pocket. O'Sullivan's lead trimmed to 2-1. Ronnie O'Sullivan played two pretty smart frames to take a 2-0 lead. But in the third, Sam Craigie to break. he missed a couple of balls. Neither of them easy. And Craigie eventually took advantage. So can the fellow from the northeast of England force a decider? By the way, on the other table, looking very good for Jack Jones. 2-0 up on Pang Jun Zhu. And 34 nil ahead in frame three. The only ball that could have come to O'Sullivan's rescue there was the green. But there is a path through for Craigie.
well, if you can see this one across the top cushion, that's a bonus. Especially now, Stephen. Yeah, and that's a superb pop from Sam. He had to play it at pace to get the cue ball out, to give himself a shot on the black with the right angle. Fantastic pot. Now, got to play some sort of cannon to the Reds. Well, he's decided to just drift it past for the loose red. Has he gone far enough? That's Hello. tight. I thought it was very tight, but clearly one of those deceptive camera angles because there was no hesitation. He got down and then addressed the ball immediately. Yeah, so he's just studying the pink now because clearly the spot's occupied. But if he's got a bit of an angle, he could maybe try and push a few into play. There is a red at the bottom of the pack that pots. He's always going to be on. Again, just doing the right thing here, just making absolute certain he knows exactly where he wants to be. And potting this red. There is a another loose red at the bottom of the pack, but it would be beneficial for Sam to maybe try and get into them. Well, he didn't like the shot playing for the black going into the pack from the black, and it's cost him because he's going to do incredibly well to get into them from there. Try and get on that red underneath the black. It's a tall order. Twenty-one. Well, he's missed a little it's bit of a trick 21. there, Sam. It would have been beneficial for him to at least try and get into the reds off the black. He may not have landed, but at least he was giving himself the chance to land. Just sort of, sort of ran out of options there. Play is still going on on table two, but the match is effectively over. Jack Jones is about to beat Pang Jun 3-0. We often see this in the Championship League. A player gets very close to winning a group, loses in the final, and then comes back the following day, suffering from a a psychological hangover having got so close but having to go through the whole process again that's confirmation Jones 28. he's put up a good performance actually played some very nice shots yeah and it's not so much Pang's game is in a bad in bad shape it's just as you say Phil the psychological effects of having to do it all over again get yourself up for it He's going to have to 34. dig deep now because he's not got off to a great start. A 3 0 loss. Jack Lawrence, 34, 3 Yeah, there comes the handshake. Next up on table two, Joe O'Connor against Jordan Brown. Oh, what a pot from Craigie. That's the kind of pot that O'Sullivan would be proud of. Look at the position attached. Yeah, 
very well struck. And the reds have been opened. So this is now a frame winning chance for Sam Craigie. This had to go really because Ronnie got a little bit fortunate covering that red to middle by the brown. Sam just got down and smashed it in. It just looks as if Sam has started to find his stride here. He's looking very sharp around the table now. He was in the practice room nice and early this morning. Put in a good half hour, 45 minutes. He knew the task ahead of him. So far, okay, he went 2-0 down, but he's responded very well. 17. Got every chance here. If he can take this to a decider, the toss of a coin. He would love to make it into the winner's group, apart from the financial aspect. It would be terrific practice for him, match practice, before he goes to the World Open. That's from the 18th to the 24th of March, just after the, the winner's group here. Has to play Robert Milkins out there. And right now, I think that's a really tough match to call. Doing the right thing there, coming back for Black to keep his cue ball down this business end. Limit the distance travelled. And he's one or two good shots away here. Everything's sort of covering one another, so this is a key shot, this Black. He can play for the red far right of the pink. Has to overhit this shot, that needs to run. Oh, it's just about crept past that red, and he can get through to the one in the middle. Forty. The most straightforward of frame balls. He's done well here, Craigie. No getting away from the fact at 2-0, O'Sullivan had Forty one seven. half chance, one full-blown chance nevertheless with a break of 78 in the third Four frame eight. and now this one here Craigie has refused to lie down yeah he was never going to lie down was he's he's that sort of character as I mentioned, he's got every chance of winning this game now. Ron has missed a few from range. Actually, have given Sam a couple of opportunities, but he's still had to step up and pot the balls, and he's done that. And Ron is watching closely as well. You can see every time the camera pans around to Ronnie, his eyes are fixated on Sam, watching what he's doing, how he's playing, how he's hitting the ball. He knows he's got a game on here. 64. And Craigie's got a milestone century on. Especially now, he should do it. As we mentioned earlier, this would be his 100th century in professional competition. Seventy-two. Could he compile it against the only player who's made over 1,000 centuries in professional competition. Over 1,200, actually. 78. 
probably come up a tad straight on the pink here. And the, the blue being off its spot means he's got to play this yellow from range. Come on, Sam. One good shot here. 85. And again, very nicely struck. Beautifully controlled. He would be the 80th player in pro snooker history to make 100 centuries in pro competition. 99. Oh, he's on 99 in both senses. 95. Well done. Cracking break. 105. I don't think he's aware of what that stood for, but he does know it's pulled him back onto level terms. It's two frames each. Here at the Mattioli Arena, Sam Craigie has shown fighting spirit and fluency. Breaks of 78 and 105 in recovering from 2-0 down to force a decider with the great Ronnie O'Sullivan. And if you're just joining us, his 105 break was the 100th that Craigie has made in pro competition. So congratulations to him. They start the decider. Over on table two, they've just started the first frame of match two of the day. Joe O'Connor and Jordan Brown, a ball yet to be potted. Craigie in One. the groove. Loved an angle on the black there, just slightly low to just chip the red away from the black. May still play it, but it was not guaranteed. He's got a shot of the red to middle. Fourteen. Tough pot this, and if he misses it, surely he's going to be leaving the red to the left of the one he's going for. Big shot. Sam Craigie, 14. I applaud his enterprise, but potting a shot like that into these middle pockets where the, the pocket entrance is so narrow is asking an awful lot. Sullivan there hit that red into the thick part of the pocket and it's just as well and he potted that into the center of the pocket the cue ball would have run on
So let's see how Ronnie goes about this now. He's got this red. Will he look to find an angle on his next colour to get into the pack? It's not a perfect pack to go into. The pink's slightly off its spot. There's quite a lot of room in between the, the main cluster. Not the best split, but at least he's got something to work with. Now he's got plenty to work with. Well. Yeah, he could just get through to that red, couldn't he? And he struck it so well again. Absolutely pinpoint on the blue. Red's a nice spread. Black pots to right corner pocket. He'll pot this red, pot the black, try and get the red away from the black just above it. And this is a great chance now to kill off this game. 18. He did very well from the blue to get the reds open as, as he did. Required plenty of pace, which we saw. Hit the pink pretty nicely. It was a big shot Sam took on to that left middle pocket. He was under no obligation to take it on, but he's feeling confident clearly. But it was a big shot because he was always going to believe in the red. Is it going to be his last shot in this match? And he's fought valiantly up to this point. 33. But when this man's at the table with the red situated as, as they are, surely that man there is going to be fearing the worst. Hasn't this been a pleasure to watch this match? Yeah, there's been a bit of everything, hasn't there? There's been Ronnie flying into a 2-0 lead, a nice comeback from Sam, a sentry, an outrageous fluke to win a frame. And now this visit from Ronnie that surely is going to clinch the match. Great start to the day, Phil. Well, it's like you said, Stephen, when he's here, everything is elevated. 72. It's like when Tiger Woods turns up at a golf tournament. It's a different feel. 73. Again, getting far more out of the cue ball than he could possibly have expected. No century, but a break of 79. More than sufficient for Ronnie O'Sullivan to start his campaign in Group 7 of the Bed Victor Championship League.